For section 2.8, we're going to be graphing linear inequalities. So, how do I graph a linear inequality? Well, first let's talk about what an inequality is and what the solution of an inequality is. So, when you plug in x and y, so let's say that I have a point that they gave me. Like, let's say I have the point 1, negative 2. If I plug that in for my x and my y, then I should have... Um, a true statement. If I don't, then it is not a solution of the inequality. So, it's asking us, is the point negative 3, 5 a solution to the inequality 3x plus 4y is greater than 8? Now, I want to take a minute before we do this to talk about greater than and less than because a lot of people get these confused. If it is pointing to the right like this where it says greater than, Okay, if it points to the right, right is greater than. And if it points to the left, like this, then that is less than. So less than points to the left, and greater than points to the right, if you get confused about that. So if I want to see if this is a solution, all I have to do is I have to plug in negative 3 for x and 5 for y. So I'm going to plug it in. So I'm going to get 3 times negative 3 plus 4 times 5 is greater than 8. And I'm going to see if that's a true statement. So I plug them in. I see if it's true. 3 times negative 3 would be negative 9. And 4 times 5 would be 20. So if I work that out, I get 11. So 11 is greater than 8, so the point is a solution. Now, if I got something that wasn't true, then I would say, no, that point is not a solution. So to test if something is a solution, you just plug in the points. Pretty simple. Okay, now the graph of an inequality shows all the solutions to an inequality. So when we have an equation, usually we have one solution, two solutions, or no solution. But with an inequality, you can have many, 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 many solutions. So um, that's what the solutions will show on the graph. Now, here's an example of what a graphed inequality looks like. Now, you have something called a boundary line. Okay, the boundary line is this line right here that we're graphing. And sometimes that boundary line is either a dotted line or dashed. They say dashed boundary line. Um, or it can be a solid boundary line. So if it's dashed, that means that the points that fall on this line, like this point right here and this point right here, like all these points that we see on the line, those are not included as solutions. So if I was to plug in this point right here, which would be like 2, 3. So if I was to plug in the point 2, 3, then that would not be a solution. It wouldn't work for my equation. Okay, But if this is a solid line, then it means that any point that you plug in on that line will be a solution. So that's what that means. So let's get into the graphing portion of it. How do I graph a linear inequality? So here are the steps for you in case you want to write these down so you don't forget. Okay, first what you're going to do is you're going to graph the boundary line. So you're just going to graph it like a normal line. Okay, then you're going to use a dashed line if it is greater than or less than without the equal to symbol underneath. But if it has the equal to symbol underneath like this, it's going to be a solid line. So that's how you tell the difference. Dashed line if it's one of these or a solid line if it has the equal to sign underneath. Okay, then you can test a point that's not on the line. So you can test the point anywhere on the graph that's not on the line and see if it works. If it does work, then you're going to shade in that area. If it's not work, if it does not work, then you're going to um, shade in the other area that you didn't test. Now I have kind of a trick for this, so you can use my trick too. It's faster. If it is less than or less than or equal to like this, then you shade um, below the line. So if it says less than, you have to shade less than the line, so you have to shade all the solutions underneath the line. If it says greater than, like this, then you're going to shade above the line. Now, if you're not sure, 
then you need to test a point. So you'll just pick any point on there and you'll plug it in. And I'll show you how to do that both ways. So this is pretty, pretty simple. So let's do some examples. So we're going to graph the inequality. Y is less than or equal to negative 3. So first I have to graph the line. This is step 1 in case you want to write down your steps. We're going to graph the line y equals negative 3. So we're going to pretend that, that that inequality symbol is not even there. And we're just going to graph the line y equals negative 3. Well, what kind of line is y equals negative 3? There's no x in my equation, so that means there's no slope. So it's going to be a flat horizontal line. So I'm going to go to y equals negative 3, and then I'm going to make a line between those points. So I'm going to make a line going through that right there. Now, perhaps I should use a different color so we can see the difference. Um, let's see, let's make it blue. There we go. Okay, then we need a shade. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at our symbol. Oh, and I forgot to check this, but if you look at your symbol right here, your symbol, we have to decide if it's a dashed or a solid line. So let's go back to that really quick. So would it be dashed or solid? Now, luckily, I forgot to do this, but luckily, if I look at my symbol, it is supposed to be solid because it has the symbol underneath, so I looked out there. Okay, then I for step three, I need to shade. Now I need to decide, determine if I'm going to shade above the line or below the line. Now, this symbol says less than. It points to the left. So I would shade less than the line, which would be below. Now if you forget this, then what you can do is you can test a point. So you can pick any point that's on the graph that's not on your boundary line right here. So let's say I pick the point 0, 0 to test. So if I'm going to test the point 0, 0, then I'm going to plug that in for x and y. Well, there's no x, so I would just plug it in for y. So 0 is less than or equal to negative 3. Okay, well that is not true because 0 is greater than negative 3. So since that's not true, I would have to shade in the area that is not where that point is at. So I wouldn't shade where 0, 0 is. I would shade underneath it. Okay? So that's how you tell where to shade. Let's try another example. So first, I have to graph my line. Well, this line is not in y equals mx plus b form. It's not in slope-intercept form. So what I have to do first is I have to get y by itself. So to get y by itself, I would cancel out the 5x. So I would subtract 5x from both sides. And then I get negative 2y is less than or equal to negative 5x minus 4. Then to cancel out the y's, I would divide by negative 2 to get y by itself. So I would have y is less than or equal to positive 5 halves x, because a negative divided by negative is a positive. And then negative 4 divided by negative 2 would be positive 2. So this is the inequality that I'm actually graphing. So my y-intercept would be 2. So I'm going to plot a 2 on the y-axis. And my slope is 5 halves. I go up 5 over 2. Now I can't do that again, so I'm going to go this way, down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 2 to complete my pattern. Then I need to decide what kind of line I have. Well, if I look at my symbol, I have a solid line because there is a line underneath here. So I'm going to grab my line. I'm going to make it a different color so you can see it. So here's the line that goes through these points. Now I need to determine where I'm going to shade. 
So if I look at my graph, uh, or my symbol rather, I have less than, it points to the left. So less than would be below the line. Now sometimes when it's slanted like this, it's hard to tell which is above and below. So I go to the tippy top and I look for which is above and which is below. Well, below would be underneath. So this would be the area I would shade in. Now remember, if you're not sure about that, you can always test a point. So I'm gonna test any point on the graph. Let's just do zero, zero again, cause that's easy. So let's say I'm testing this point zero, zero. I'm gonna fill that in. So five times zero, I plug it in for X and Y. Minus two times zero is less than or equal to negative four. So I would just get zero is less than or equal to negative four. Well, that is not true. Zero is greater than negative four. So I would have to shade, um, let's see. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Good thing I made this mistake. I forgot to do something. Um, if, since that is not true, I am supposed to not shade in this area right here. So what I have to go back and do is I have to look for a mistake that I made. Let's see if you guys caught it. So let's go back here and look at this. Okay. When I was graphing this, when I was solving this for Y, I divided by a negative number. And there's something that you have to remember to do when you divide by a negative number, and that is to flip your sign. So I forgot to flip my sign, which will change the direction that I shade. So it's a good thing I tested a point. So I would do y is greater than or equal to 5 halves x plus 2. Now that doesn't change my line because I'm still up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 2. So this doesn't change. And my line doesn't change the fact that it's solid because it still has the equal to underneath, but it will change where I shade. I should shade, zero, zero did not test out, so I should not shade where zero, zero is. I should shade above the line because it says greater than now, so I should shade above. So sometimes it's helpful to test a point instead of to use the shortcut because I would have never found my mistake. So make sure if you divide by a negative number when you're solving for your inequalities that you go ahead and you shade and you flip your sign. So let's go to graphing absolute value inequalities. This is different. Okay, so we're following the same steps. Graphing an absolute value inequality is similar to graphing a regular inequality, but the boundary line is an absolute value graph. So instead of having a line this time, we're going to have a V shape because absolute value graphs make a V shape. So we're just going to graph the absolute value just like normal. Okay, so let's graph y is greater than negative 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 4. So first I need to look at where my vertex is. So this minus 3 inside the absolute value symbols means that I'm going to move which direction? So I should move right 3, and this means I go up 4 on the outside. And then this negative means that it is upside down, it's reflected like this. And the 2 is my slope. So I'm going to go right 3, 1, 2, 3, up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, there's my vertex. And my slope is a negative 2, so I'm going down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. Now because I'm shading, I'm going to go all the way as far as I can off the graph. Oh darn it, hold on, back up a step. Okay, I forgot to do something again. So let's go down 2 this way and left 1. Down 2, left 1. And we'll keep doing this so that we have an accurate graph. I'm going to draw my boundary line. Now I have to remember to check to see my symbol is greater than, so would I have a dotted line or a solid line? Now in this case, I would have a dotted line, sorry, because this 
this symbol is does not have the greater than or equal to sign underneath. It doesn't have the equal to, so it's going to be a dotted line like this. Okay, then I need to shade. It says greater than, so I need to shade above the boundary line. So when you shade this, it's going to look a little bit different. You're going to shade above the boundary line, so it's going to be this entire area up here. Now, it's helpful for you guys if you have two different colors um, when you're doing this so you can see your line and your graph, but you don't have to have two different colors. It just is helpful. So, All right, so you will need to answer the essential question with your summary. How do I graph a linear inequality? So I would be sure to make sure to include all three steps. That way you don't make mistakes and forget like I did. So thank you.